Hello everyone, welcome to the class. This week we are going to learn how to create a database based on the class diagram design. We are going to have three, video, three videos on this, um, on this topic. The first video is going to be uh, creating tables based on your class diagram design. The second video will be create simple queries that can answer business questions. And the third video will be um, creating some relatively more complicated queries that can answer business questions that require some sort of aggregate information. So in this first video, we are going to learn how to create uh, tables based on your class diagram design. So we are going to create this uh, six tables um, in today's session. Um, so what we are going to use is my desktop or what we call the virtual desktop. If you have Windows at home and if you have Microsoft uh, Access on your computer, that would work. If you don't have um, Microsoft Access or if you're using a Mac, then you can log into the virtual desktop. If you forget how to log into virtual desktop, you can go back to uh, Canvas. There, uh, under the resources, you will find links to see how to set up the multi-factor authentication and you should be able to log into uh, my desktop. If, if you encounter any um, technical issues, please contact uh, IT department via the service desk, which is also provided in, in the syllabus. Please let me know if you have any questions um, regarding uh, this session. So now let's, uh, let's start. If you remember, in the previous lab session, we created a class diagram for the, for the database project. So basically, we created six different classes, and we identified primary key, foreign key, different attributes, attribute data type. We also identified the relationships between two different classes. We also find out um, the multiplicities in there as well. So now let's create um, the tables based on all these different um, classes. So the sequence that we're going to create for the tables is going to be customer, product, coupon, then order, order line, and return. The reason that we are creating all these tables in this sequence is because you want to create um, the tables that doesn't have a foreign key in it first, and then you will create the, car, uh, the tables that has a foreign key that is, that is related to a primary key in another table. So let's open access together. So basically you can search in the search bar here, down here. You don't have to use uh, AJ apps. Just type in access. And you should be able to open the uh, software. So let's single click on the blank desktop database and uh, find a location if you want. Uh, so we, we can name this one as MIS201 database project. And then you can find uh, your storage space here. And maybe you can save it under document and click OK and click create. So now we are at the uh, main user interface of Microsoft Access. So to um, when you first open it, it automatically uh, shows you a table in here. So we are going to go to the design view to create the attributes of this table. So let's change the design view. And if you remember, the table name should be the same as your class name. So we are going to type in customer and click Save, click OK. So now we can type in all the attributes. So our primary key, if you remember, the little key here identifies that this field is going to be the primary key. So our primary key is customer ID, and we decide to use short text. So basically, we are just um, typing whatever we have in this class into Access. 
Next one is going to be uh, username, short text, password, short text. Next one is going to be email and short text. So now we are done by creating, um, adding in all the attributes. So we can go back to the data sheet view and add some uh, records in there. So we will save it. So let's say let's create three example customer um, in here. So um, while you're following this video, you can just create three simple examples. And after watching this video, please add more records in here. So for each of your table, please include at, at least 10 records in that table. So let's say customer ID C1, username, uh, let's use my favorite show again. So we're going to put Monica in here. I know I hear some of you laughing in front of the screen. Okay, password, we can type in a random password in here. One, two, three, four, five. And email, we can just type a simple email in here. M at gmail.com. So same thing, C2, uh, let's say loss, one, two, three, r at gmail.com c3 we can have uh, who else Julie and j at gmail.com so now we are pretty much done with uh, creating this table so please click save or press ctrl s to save this uh, table and then let's close it. You could choose not to close it, but I would recommend you once you're done with the table, close it to avoid um, any type of confusion or complicated situation. If sometimes you might uh, accidentally uh, type the wrong name for a table, you can always close the table first and then right click on there and choose rename and rename and retype the name of the table. If you want to uh, edit your records or uh, the attribute names, you can always double click on this table and then reopen the table or change to design view. Okay, so now we are going to create the second table. So the second table is going to be product. So we will click create table and uh, we are going to change design view. And this is going to be product, click OK. And we are going to type in all the attributes. So product ID, short text, product name, short text, manufacturing cost, manufacturing Currency. Please note that this one should be currency because it's uh, in US dollars. Listing price. Currency. Okay, so now please pause for a minute because we are going to do a very important step. So let's save so far what we have for now because for the next one, we are going to use a data type called calculated field. And for the calculated field, you have to save um, whatever you have so far so you can use um, the field or the attribute you have already created. If you don't save it first and directly go to calculated field, it because because what you have typed in is not saved, so it can, you won't be able to find the attributes that you need. So again, before we move on to the next one, please click save or Ctrl S and save whatever you have so far first. So now we have saved our input. So basically we have already created uh, these four attributes. Now we can add the, the, the fifth one. So ST, uh, estimated profit. So this estimated profit is basically saying that if we are not offering any discount based on the listing price and manufacturing cost, what is the estimated profit for a product? 
So the estimated profit is going to be the listing price minus the manufacturing cost. So we are going, of course, we can calculate it by hand and then type in this number, but that would be too inefficient. So that's why I want to introduce this data type called calculated field uh, to you so that you can use it for auto calculation. So basically, once you type in the manufacturing cost and the listing price, the estimated profit will be uh, automatically calculated. So let's type in calculated field. So calculated. So this will, once you type in calculated, this will pull up an expression builder. So now you see that under expression categories, the four attributes are already identified in here. So we are going to double click on listing price and type minus and double click manufacturing cost. So now we have our formula built up in here. This is kind of similar to when you're using Excel to create a formula that, that helps you to uh, make a calculation. So similar thing. You identify the column you want to use, and then you identify the expression, uh, the calculation you want to use in the middle. So click OK. And we can go back to our data sheet view. So of course, we need to save the table. So now let's type, uh, again, three examples for here as well. So P1 is going to be, let's say, we are selling a uh, hat. And the manufacturing cost is going to be $10. Listing price will be $25. And you will see that we don't need to type in anything for estimated profit as long as you type in the manufacturing cost and the listing price the estimated profit will be there. So as you see, sometimes we don't, we are not able to see the full name of a column. We can uh, <clears throat> drag the columns uh, wide or width to show the entire thing. So again, similar to the way you use Excel. So product two, we are going to pitch, uh, sell maybe sunglass. I know all the things I'm typing is things to get you prepared to go outside. Sorry about that. It's just some product came into my mind. Uh, so manufacturing cost, sunglass, I say this is going to be $20 and we're selling them for $50. And you can see the estimated profit is going to be 15 minus 20, which is 30. So P3. Okay, let's think about something that we could use at home. Okay, we need some cake as we need some energy to finish this class. Okay, so manufacturing cost, let's say this is $2 and we are selling it for five. Yeah, maybe this should be a cupcake. Okay, so now you see that the estimated profit is automatically calculated. So let's save this table again and close it. So now we can create the third table, which is coupon table. So let's click create table, design view, and coupon. Click OK. Primary key is going to be coupon code, short text, uh, discount percentage, One is going to be number because we are later on we are going to use it for math calculations. So if you look at num once you would choose number, you will see that under here there's um, a field called general. And for the field size, as we talked about, we can change this one to regular integer. We don't need a long integer in here. If you use long, long, long integer, technically there's nothing wrong here as well, so that's fine. But I would say like let's use integer. So now let's go back to your uh, data sheet view and type some coupon code and discount percentage. So maybe the first coupon code is going to be um, holiday. And discount percentage is going to be 40%. And the next one is, let's say, maybe a April, dis March discount. And the discount percentage can be 10. You can be very creative in here. You don't have to type the exact same thing as what I'm typing in here. 
So maybe another coupon code can be Dolphin. And the discount percentage can be, let's say, 20. So now we are done with this table, and then we can uh, save it and then close it. So now we are done with the customer table. Let me highlight it. We are also done with the product table. We are done with the coupon table as well. So the next one we are going to create is the order table because you see in the order table, we have two foreign keys. One is the customer ID, the other one is coupon code. And we have already created the customer table and coupon table. So now we are good, good to go to create the order tables. So let's create that one. So click create table and design view. So this one is going to be order. So uh, the, this one is a long table. So we're going to type in order ID, which is the private key. Order ID for text. Customer ID. So let's pause a, for a few seconds in here. So if you see in our table, in our class diagram, the customer ID is a foreign key. So uh, of course, you can just type in short text as the data type in here, and then later on, you can type in all the customer ID by yourself. But the issue is that sometimes you may forget uh, what are the customer IDs you use in the customer table, or you might have a mismatch in here, which will create a lot of issue later on when you're trying to use this database. So what we are going to use in here is a function of Microsoft Access. It's called um, Lookup Wizard. So basically, it will find whatever you have created in the customer table as customer ID and provide that as a drop-down list for you in this table so that you can choose from the drop-down list rather than typing it in. So we will type in customer ID. And under data type, let's go to the last one, lookup wizard. And uh, for this one, we want to use the values from another table or query. So click Next. And the table we are going to look at is going to be customer, right? Because your customer ID is in the customer table. So we are going to use the customer table. Click Next. And we are going to select the customer ID as our field because we are going to use the values in the customer ID. So choose customer ID. Click Next. We don't, we don't need to uh, really do anything here. If you are, you are interested, you can explore this function later. So now we have, you see it's listing all the customer ID we have created in the customer table. And let's click Next. Now this one is important. If you remember previously, we talked about um, the integrity of uh, the different tables. So basically it's saying that for all of your foreign keys, it should exist as a primary key in the other table. So Access will help you automatically check that. So let's take let's check enable data integrity. And now we are done. So we can click finish and click save. Uh, click yes. So we are going to save it. So now what happens is if you go to your uh, database tool and go to relationships, you will see that it's kind of generating a um, class diagram type of thing, similar to what we have in here. And also you can see the, the multiplicity in here as well. So let's close here and come back. So now we can type in the next one, which is coupon code. So if you remember for coupon code, it's also a foreign key, so we are going to use the lookup wizard again. Next. So now we are going to use the coupon table. Choose coupon code. Next. 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 Enable data in terabit. Finish. Click Save. Yes. So now, if you go to your database tool and open relationships again, uh, hmm. Let's see, show table, add. So if you add the coupon, you will see that 
the coupon is also showing here. Okay, click close. Yes. So now we can keep typing more uh, attributes. So order date and time. This is going to be date and time, right? So you see in date and time, for the format, we can actually change, choose what format we want. So we can use a general date in here, a long date, a medium date. So up to you, we'll choose general date in here. And next one is billing address. And this is going to be short text, shipping address, short text, contact number, short text, credit card, number, short text, uh, expiration date, date and time. For this one, it's going to be a little bit tricky. So if you remember how your uh, expiration date looks like on your card, it usually should be a month and then a slash and then a year. If you look at the default format, it doesn't exist in here. So we can actually create that by ourselves. So we can have a month, month, and slash year, year. And next one. So basically, if you want to look again, it's month, month, slash year, year. Okay. Expiration date. We are almost there. So last one. Security code. Short text. Okay. So now we're all done with all the attributes. Let's save it. Yes. And go to your data sheet view. So now we can start to add some uh, examples. So let's say for other one, old one. Now you see the customer ID is going to show up as a drop down list. If you didn't see this, it means there is something wrong with your uh, <coughs> design view. So go back to your design view or go back to where we are, when we are looking at the design view and maybe re redo the process. Let's say order one is created by customer one. The coupon code is going to be Dolphin. The order date we can choose, let's say today. Uh, billing address, we can say this is going to be uh, maybe 1419 South Springs, South Springs Road. Oops, Springs Road. So we can copy and paste this to the shipping address as well. Contact number, let's just type one, two, three. I don't not I don't mind you just like type one number in here. It, it doesn't matter. I don't I know that you don't want to spend a lot of time like typing in all the fake data. So credit, oops, what did I do? Credit card number one expiration date, so we can say it's going to expire in 21. And oops, yeah, 2021. And security code is one, two, three. Okay. Next one, O2. Maybe customer two made this and he used holiday. Order date, let's say it. He made an order maybe on the 19th. Billing address, you can you can just type in uh, default if you want to save time. I don't mind. Default. For shipping address, please type something. The reason for, uh, for this is because later on, we are going to run a query related to this area. So let's try to type some shipping address. So let's say for this one, he is shipping it to um, NJ. So we can simply type in NJ. Okay. And contact number one, credit card number two, uh, two, expiration date. Let's say maybe it's in, we can type in 08, 1, 20, 22. Okay, security code, one, two, three. Um, oh, 
3. Maybe it's also made by C2. And the coupon code is going to be March. Let's say the order date is somewhere in April. The reason I'm doing this is also because later on we are going to run a query <coughs> related to the order date. So uh, that's why I want to show you how it works. If you want, actually, you can also type in more time in here. So maybe let's say order at 9, 8 a.m. That will work as well. And then billing address default to save some typing time. Uh, let's say for this time, the shipping address, we can use NY. So please uh, choose NY because I want to show you how uh, a query works later on. So let's use some, some example. Let's change this one to a lower key. Uh, actually, let's keep this one as high um, as uh, <coughs> the upper NY. Uh, we can create another other example later. So contact number two, credit card number three. Three um, expiration date. Um, let's create another uh, the last example in here. Okay, O four, O four, four, C three, uh, March. This one. Other one is in D5. Actually, let's make it into April default. Um, let's put a small M line here. Okay, so now we're done with the uh, order table and we can save it and close it. So now let's create the next table. So the next table we're going to create is the order line table. So we are done with the order table, so now we should be able to create other line table. So change to design view and this is going to be order line. Order line table. Click OK. And the field ID is going to be order line ID. Short text. Order ID. Again, this is a foreign key and we are going to use a lookup wizard, which we created before. So this should be order table, right? Because it's order ID. Next, choose order ID. Next, next, next. Na enable data integrity, finish. Yes. And uh, product ID. Now you see why I was saying like the sequence matters when we create a table because if you don't have that table created, you may have a hard time to create this type of relationship between the foreign key with the primary key. So this one product ID, we're going to use the product table. Click next, product ID, next, next, next. Enable data integrity, finish. The last one, purchase quantity. So this one is going to be a number. We are going to use it for some math calculations later. So again, here, if you want, you can change this one to a uh, regular integer. And now we can start to enter some records in here. So online uh, order line ID, we can say OL1 to so that you can separate it from your order ID. Say O1 product P1 purchase quantity hmm. two. OL2. Let's say it's still for order one. Okay, order one P1 
purchase quantity 4. OL3, order ID, group 2, P3, 1. OL4, O3, P1, 10. OL4, OL5, order, order ID, P2, 5. And click Save, and we are all set with the order mark. So now we can create the last table. The last table is return. So return, we are going to click create table. And we are going to change it to design view. This is going to be return. Click OK. And the first one is return ID. So the data type that we had in uh, the class diagram is short text. Uh, but in here, I want to show you how auto number works. So we are going to use auto number here. And order line. Order line ID, which is going to be lookup wizard. So next, order line, next. Other line ID next 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 enable data integrity click finish okay. yes and the next one is going to be return date and this is going to be date and time so this time let's try with uh, a short one just a short date and return quantity. This is going to be number return condition. Short text, refund. Oh, actually return condition, we are going to use a yes or no. So basically, if the return condition is good, then it is a yes. If not, it's going to be no, because I really want to show you this uh, how this data type works. And another one is refound status. So usually there are probably three or four different status for refound. So we can use um, we can use a drop down list again. So we can click lookup wizard. So this time we are going to use it differently. We are going to create our own values and use that as a drop down list. So click I would type in the values that I want. Click next. And we can type in uh, processing, refund, rejected. So we can use, let's say you can add more if you want. We, but, but for a, a simple, simple example, I'm just going to keep this three here. Click next, click uh, limit to list, and click finish. So now we are all set with the short text. So we can go back to the data, uh, data sheet view to enter some records. So for return ID, you see that because it's auto number, so we don't really have to type in any number in here. So let's choose an order line. So let's say we returned order line one. The return date is going to be April 17. Return quantity, we return one. And the return condition is good. So basically, if you say, Remember, we use a Boolean data type in here, which is yes and no. So if you click it, then it's yes. If not, it means that it was in bad condition. So refund status, let's choose uh, maybe processing, right? So OL. Let's also return something from uh, OL2. So for OL2, we're returning it maybe April 30. Return quantity, maybe 2. Actually, let's make it uh, as one as well. It might be easier. So uh, return condition is going to be bad. And we will say this is rejected. And for OL line, you see 
I accidentally checked the yes or no. That's why I accidentally created a record here. If you're trying to delete the record, you can simply right click on this line and click delete record and click yes. So if you want, we can keep adding like another record or three. This one was return. Let's say it's return in May. Return quantity, maybe. Let's take a look at our order line. How many did we order for OF3? Okay, so one, OF2, four. Okay, close. So for this one, maybe we can have two, this one, one, and good condition, and we say this is refund. Then let's change the state maybe to a little bit earlier. Okay, so uh, let's double check the order line. When is, sorry, so OL3 belongs to order 2, and order 2 was made in March. So time-wise, we are fine. We are not returning something before buying it. Okay, good. So return, good. So now we are all set with creating all the tables. So we can close it. So an interesting thing that you can see is uh, the relationships. So if, so if you click database tool, click relationships. And if you click show table, and the missing tables in here are uh, other line, product, and return. Click close. So now if you reorganize them with their uh, sequence, then you go here. And if, if you want to put coupon here, all the line down here, product up here, and return down here, you will see that the relationship actually looks very similar to what we have in the class diagram, right? So customer order, product, coupon, all the line, return. And you can see that all these different tables are actually connected by the primary key and the foreign key. So now we are all set uh, with creating all the tables. So we can close it and save the relationships and uh, go back to your file. Maybe, oh, we already saved it, so we are all set. Um, and then you can just exit uh, the database of Microsoft Access. If you want to reopen all the different tables, you can. You see, because we add the relationships, so now if you look at the customer table, it will show you customer one made order one, and order one contains uh, order line one and order line two, and order line one includes a return, and order two includes a return. Because we build all these relationships, this connects all of our data uh, together. So if you, let's say, let's look at a simpler one. So if you look at the coupon, you will see that which orders actually used um, the coupon code doffing and which other use holiday and which others use uh, March. So you see, it's pretty nifty how this uh, software works. So that's pretty much what I want to cover in this video. So for the next video, we're going to take a look at how to create some simple queries to answer a business question. Um, see, uh, talk to you soon. Bye.